Another photo outing today. This time we have the 11 to 22 millimeter lens. I usually use this for the vlogging stuff, but in this case, we've got the action camera to do that. Of course, nature stuff again. It's always pretty easy to make happen. Let's look around a little bit. In this case, going that direction was a lot better. This is really interesting. Don't usually go in this area. just so many things here I could take quite a long time checking it all out with the action camera today we are using 2.7 K at 30 frames a second with Rock City I'm using the normal color profile with the D warp D fishing but this time I do have a secondary microphone see if I have to merge that or not Some of these I'm just guessing at. Super bright and I don't want to stick my face down there. This is nice. Very nice. This is your one native EFM option. It is pretty nice. I mean, it's not the cheapest thing ever and the apertures are not fast, but you do have a good amount of quality to it with the images. There is the Sigma 16 millimeter, so you can get larger aperture. But 16 isn't that wide. It's not that ultra wide that I'm talking about. Even 11 on crop is not super, super wide. Of course, you can always adapt something, but or buy an old manual focus, you know, third party option, which there probably are quite a few out there. It's not super into those. I mean, I'd definitely try one, but it's too far for this lens. The one negative of uh, ultra wide, my 22 millimeters. I don't know with 22 millimeters and the crop, if we can even see them, we'll check later. Let's see if I can get over there somehow. So in this case with 2.7K, I feel better leaving the action camera running almost the entire time instead of making clips. I don't know if that's great because I'm still going to use a ton of data, but I can potentially pull out more interesting stuff. In this case, this area would be good for high dynamic range, multiple exposure photos. Might try something, but I didn't bring a tripod for the actual camera so I could switch it off. Probably good enough. Should I use this in the foreground? Or just go over there? Or I use this as the action camera tripod. So here we've got our bracketing. I'm going to go back into screen that I can adjust here. Put this at 100. Let's do 5.6. So that's our baseline. Looks okay. And then go into the info screen. This one, we go into here. So you can see these change the bracket size. And it shows a little icon which I think is this one. There we go. 
So that's a full bracket, negative three to positive three. So two seconds. And we took quite a few photos. With this tripod as it is, probably a 10 second timer would be even better. So we'll do that. Because even just touching it is pretty shaky time. One reason I'm getting a little deeper these days is because of not trying to be around people. This is a state park. It gets pretty busy sometimes. You can probably hear the cars. There's a bicycle. Found a path of some type. That could be a photo maybe. That's really interesting. I'm gonna try another bracket real quick. So if you have some type of surface, it'll work just fine. If you don't have a tripod, this would be a good opportunity to set a custom mode for bracketing specifically, because it does take a little bit of time to set it up. This is one time when the horizon, horizon. This is one time when the horizon level is super useful. Something like this, getting the lines straight, at least as far as the camera thinks they're straight. It's a little icon right here for that horizon. So that it shifts when I change the thing. One thing you can do with the M5 is that when you're on the screen, you can use the viewfinder still, so that's pretty nice. Putting that into C2, hopefully it'll work out as I expect. Oh nice, it actually picks the screen you're on too. That is really convenient. The thing is with the more expensive cameras, or at least the M5 was more expensive when it came out, you do have photographer convenience features so with the custom modes, it'll even save what info screen you're on. That way, when I set up the bracket, I left it on that screen with just the black screen with the numbers and stuff so that I can quickly switch from my photo mode to bracketing. Screens are correct. The settings are correct. Might have to adjust a thing or two depending on the scene, but that is extremely convenient. It's quicker. It's less hassle to get your photos and just enjoy the experience once you understand the controls, the way that it works, the way you can customize it. See, I'm in C1 on the top here. It's a standard screen. Switch to C2. It goes to the info screen with numbers. One thing you can do with your photos is play around with the light. You can see these shapes here. Depending on where your camera is positioned and all that, how it looks in the scene, it can be... It can be either really nice or not so great. So definitely pay attention to any strong light sources like that. When you're walking around areas like this, there's no need to push yourself too hard. I'm getting kind of dizzy, but as long as you take a break for a second. The goal of this stuff is to have a good time doing photography 
and finding areas that you enjoy being in. I do the nature stuff because one, it's pretty convenient, it's enjoyable, I get exercise. I would probably like to go into the city and things that maybe eventually I'll do some of that stuff, but it's a little more logistical and finding areas that people won't hassle you, type of stuff like that. At least with here, don't generally have any problems. Of course, you can break your ankle or something. That wouldn't be good. Or get attacked by bees or wasps or get uh, ticks. So many things. Thing that I do, I tuck in my shirt. So I have boots with pants that go over. I spray like high intensity bug spray on my shoes, my arms, my face, my neck, all the exposed skin areas. And then I do a sweep around my body. It's just being prepared for going out to areas like this. In the summertime, going in paths like this, it's a lot more bearable. Go in the daytime, it's not gonna make any difference. You will get stronger lights like this hitting in, but if you use bracketing, or some other technique, you try to avoid them, you can make it work. With my secondary microphone setup, I have a microphone right here with uh, two little wind muffs. It's a Sony microphone, stereo one. And then I also have the recorder here, it's just an Olympus with the input. It's MP3, it's not amazing, but a little bit smaller and easier and I don't care if I break it compared to the zoom one. That's it for this photo outing. Hope you enjoyed it. Nice, calm, enjoyable photo walk. Scott Photography Bonza, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks. If you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing. Helps me out a lot. Likes and shares help out a lot as well. Thanks again.